everyone. It is Monday, the second day of the Who Done It Athon, and like this lighting we is weird and the angle is weird, but I just got off work and I'm exhausted and I look exhausted. Um, but yeah, I thought I would do like a quick check in because I don't think that I, I don't want to show you where I look. I don't think that I um, put anything prior to this. I mean, like maybe I showed some clips of the bookstore because even though I just went on like this big, not a rant, but like this big ordeal about like not buying that many books in 2019, I went to the bookstore and I bought books. Um, so yeah, starting off on a strong note for 2019. But um, so for the Who Done a Thon, I have started reading one of my books. Um, I started Watching You by Lisa Jewell. I actually have the, the dust jackets right here. Um, I'm really enjoying this one. I think I know what's going to happen. Um, I am pretty far into it. I am 245 pages in. So I'm almost done. I can probably finish it tonight, maybe tomorrow. Um, but I am really enjoying it. It is about this guy who's kind of like um, everybody likes him he's like he's like around 50 years old and he's like supposed to be like this stand-up guy and he's like the headmaster of a school and I be pretty in like I don't like me make sure it's not a spoiler um, yeah I'm not gonna say anything else there's a lot of secrets that are being revealed and people are not who they seem and yeah so I'm really enjoying it I uh, I've read I'm having a hard time talking. I've read Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell and enjoyed that one. Um, so, yeah, the books that I got from the bookstore were Watching You by Lisa Jewell, and then I grabbed We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, which, um, if you saw my books I want to reread in 2019 video, this is one of them. I wanted to have my own physical copy of it. Um, I really love this book, and um, the first time I read it was like in the spring so like it makes me think of spring I don't know it's weird I'm weird like that um, and then I also got Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett and I am super excited to read this one from what I understand I believe a woman is hired to possibly steal something and maybe like for the king or something like that and then the magic system you can change the elements of things or change what things are to your advantage like what I don't I don't know I've heard um, a lot of great things about this and there is a sequel coming out later this year so I'm really excited to get to that and I sorry about the dog but <laughs> I know we're in the middle of the whodunit-a-thon but I am like loving all the fantasy lately like that's all I'm craving um, so I am still working on Forest Mage by Robin Hobb. I don't know if I've mentioned that anywhere else. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, it's more like up to date with what I'm reading. Um, so yeah, anyways. Uh, I also, in the mail today, got Foe by Ian Reed. This is going to be my book for genre bending book or challenge or whatever. Um, it's less than 300 pages and I previously read I'm Thinking of Ending Things by him and I really enjoyed it. So this one is supposed to be like a psychological thriller, possibly partially horror. I know it's supposed to be something really weird and I don't want to know much about it because I didn't know anything about I'm Thinking of Ending Things and it turned out to be like one of my favorite books I read last year. It was just super thrilling and anxiety ridden so I'm really looking forward to this one um but yeah that's that is my update for now I'm trying to keep my updates short I don't know like if I'm going to do a vlog for this week and a vlog for next week or just one big one but we'll see how it goes um yeah I will check in later after I get some rest and I hope everything I just said was go here Hey everyone, happy Saturday. It is um, the seventh day of the readathon. Sixth, seventh? Do we start on Sunday? Whatever. It's been a while since I updated. I think the last time I updated was on Monday. <sighs> yeah. My life's pretty boring. I've mentioned before that I work a full time 
job and I spend a lot of time commuting and it's a boring office job. I can't film there. There's nothing to film there anyways. Um, yeah. So not much has really been going on and I don't do much in the winter. Like outside of the house. <laughs> oh God. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that though. But anyways, I've actually been making some pretty good progress in the readathon. Um, the first book that I finished was Watching You by Lisa Jewell. In this, we are following a couple different characters. Um, one of them is a newlywed woman. She has some dark secrets. She moves into her brother and sister-in-law's house. And her neighbor is the headmaster of a school and he's really, really well known and like everyone loves him and he's great and he does all these great things for the schools that he works at. But then he's suspected of having inappropriate relationships with these young girls. Um, yeah. So basically, everyone has their deep dark secrets and everyone lies a lot. Um, so it's basically your typical mystery um, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I can't really put my finger on, like, why it's not a 5-star book. It's just not my favorite, so I couldn't put give it a 5 like I give favorites. Um, but I really enjoy Lisa Jewell. I'll be reading more from her. This is the second one I've read from her, and I would recommend it. Um, the next book that I finished was actually the group book, so that is uh, An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I tried to read The Wife Between Us last year, um, and that was a really hyped book, and I I just couldn't, couldn't get through it. I DNF'd it. This one, the pacing was super weird, and I would say almost 200 pages into the book, or it was almost 200 pages into the book before I like cared what was going on really or I was really hooked but in this we're following a young woman who is having like money troubles and so she signs up to be a part of this um, like psychology test it's like a morality test so she thinks she's just gonna go and like answer questions to a survey and she does but then the um, psychologist who or psychiatrist who is putting the study on asks her to um, like continue with the study and so she starts sending her on all these like weird errands and stuff to do but she Jessica the girl thinks she's just being tested on like her morality like oh and what would what would you do in this situation blah 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 um, but it starts to take a darker turn and she doesn't really understand like what this psychiatrist wants from her and she starts to be controlling and things like that um, I gave it a 4 out of 5. Uh, I took a star off for the pacing, it taking a while for me to get into it. And then the ending itself was not very exciting, not very like climatic, like it was just like done. I don't I don't know. Um, but maybe I will try The Wife Between Us again in the future knowing that I have to maybe push a little bit further than I usually like to before I DNF a book. Um, Yes, this it it was entertaining, um, and it was it was well written. Uh, it is from different points of view, and it's a bunch of people with a bunch of deep dark secrets. <laughs> um, the next one that I finished was "She Lies in Wait" by Githa Lodge. Um, this wasn't originally on my TBR, but my library actually came through with a copy of it, and it just came out this month. This is a new mystery detective series. We're following DCI Jonah Sheens. Um, he, and a few of his partners too, or like his team. Um, but, so it is about in the 80s, a group of kids went camping, one of them went missing, and then 30 years later her body is found, and that's when this DCI, that's when he starts um, investigating this crime. But he does have a past with these people. Um, he was around the same age as them. He knew them when he was younger. Um, so now he's basically like, okay, one of these people is the killer or it's somebody else. But he thinks he's like um, maneuvering through these like six different friends who they're either all trying to hide something, one person's hiding the, something, they all killed her, none of them killed her, whatever. I gave this a three and a half out of five. Um, it was a good debut novel, it was an interesting mystery, um, but it's, uh, whew. it's been done before, and it's been done better. 
Um, the, but it is a series that I would be interested in picking up the next one uh, from the library. I wouldn't buy it, but I am interested to see like how she develops the characters and everything. I felt like we weren't really connected with the characters. Um, I have a feeling that she's actually going to pull a ton of French and take someone who's not the main character in this book and make them the main character in the next book because it was almost like we got more information and more personal information about a side character than we did about the DCI Jonah Sheens. But the, the series is called like DCI Jonah Sheens, like number one. So I'm, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Three and a half out of five stars is still a really good book to me. Um, it just wasn't anything like blowing me out of the water. Um, the next book, I guess I should say what challenges I'm reading these for. Um, this one is going to be Branches or Blue on the cover. Um, this one is the group read or an eye on the cover. This one is Blue on the cover or a hyped book. Um, so I can like double dip these and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be successful at this readathon because I can double dip like any of the books I'm reading basically. Um, but the next one I am just started to read I'm only 20 pages in but this one could also count for an eye on the cover and that is the silent patient this was one of my picks for book of the month club this month um we're following a psychotherapist who is from what I understand this woman murdered her husband and she never said a word after that so she was deemed unfit for trial unfit for like jail time and so this psychotherapist gets a job at this woman's hospital and he's going to try to figure out her motives and why she's not talking and what's going on with her um like i said i'm only like 20 pages in and i don't know much else about it and i don't want to know much else about it but i think it's going to be a really fast read um and then the last challenge i think i've covered them all is to read a genre bending mystery thriller. Um, for that, I'm going to be reading Faux by Ian Reed. I haven't started it yet, um, but I really liked I'm Thinking of Ending Things by him. And this one is like 250 pages or so. So I have a feeling I can finish this. I can finish The Silent Patient. And then I also may try to fit in um, the Child Finder by Renee Denfeld still because that one's a fairly short book as well and we still have until the 28th, like Sunday, next Sunday. So I still have a full week. Um, but I read mystery thriller books like way faster than, I mean like maybe like a contemporary book that like has no substance really to it. Like there's nothing, I mean like it's just, you know, like like a Casey West, like young adult contemporary, or like, I don't even know, who writes contemporary books? I don't know. My brain is so, like, I'm reading these, of course, mystery thrillers, and I'm really enjoying them, but like, my focus right now is fantasy. Um, so throughout, in between reading all these books, I'm also still working on the Soldier Sun trilogy by Robin Hobb, and I'm currently on the second book, which is Forest Mage. I am, um... 365 pages into this book. I'm really enjoying this trilogy. And if you watch my channel, you know like Robin Hobb is my queen, blah, blah, blah. She's my favorite. I know you're sick of it. I know. But this is what I'm working on. I'm just enjoying being in her writing. I just, I just love her. Um, but this is the biggest one of the trilogy. It's the second one, like I said. So um, I hope to finish this one in January and move on to the next one in February or maybe... We'll see how the reading goes. I don't think I can get both done in January. But yeah, so that is my update. And uh, not much has been going on. Did I mention the snowstorm? So we're getting hit by Harper. She's such a bitch, you know? Um, I'm supposed to get like six to nine inches of snow. So I'm basically snowed in. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> it started off snowing really bad and now it's like nothing's happening. And I like canceled plans and all kinds of stuff to like, because I, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I can get some more reading done today. I want to like clean the house and stuff, but um, I also have played Zelda Breath of the Wild for a couple hours this morning. So I'll probably do more of that this weekend. Um, but yeah, I will uh, check in later when I have 
something else to check in about. Hey everyone, it is now Thursday, the second week of the readathon. Technically, we have until Sunday to read the books or finish the challenges, but I've completed them all. And I don't know what else is really going to go on. I feel like this vlog is kind of long already. And um, I don't even know the last time that I checked in really. I do know what books I've already talked about so I'll just mention those real quick. And then basically I'm wrapping up the vlog here, wrapping up the readathon. Yes, so the first book that I have is Watching You by Lisa Jewell. This was for Read a Hyped book. I've already spoken about this one. I've also already spoken about An Anonymous Girl by Greer, Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This was the um, group book that we chose. Um, I guess I could give you my ratings though. I gave this like a four and a half out of five. I gave this a four out of five. Then I finished She Lies in Wait by Githa Lodge. This I am counting for a book with trees or branches on the cover. This I gave like a three and a half out of five. And then the last two books that, um, oh, I got, and for blue on the cover. And then the last two books, uh, I did not finish yet the last time I updated, I'm pretty sure. I had just started The Silent Patient, so this one, uh, is counting for an eye on the cover. Um, I ended up giving this book four out of five stars. In this, we're following Theo, who is a criminal psychologist, and... He switches hospitals that he works at, or he switches jobs because there is a young woman, Alicia, who is um, living in this mental institution because she murdered her husband and ever since then she hasn't spoken a word. Um, so nobody knows why she did it, like her motivations or what led to her killing her husband. Um, and also, like she was found like unfit for trial, unfit for jail. So they put her in this mental institution or this hospital. And so he wants to go there and um, work with her and like be her doctor and find out what happened and blah, blah, blah. And on the inside of the cover, it does say that um, something about the a search for the truth that threatens to consume him. So it's kind of like him blurring the lines between patient and doctor and how he feels about this woman and why he wants to work with her. Uh, there is kind of like there is a big twist to this, but it's not that I saw it coming. It's like I knew something like that was going to have to happen because of what I how I thought this book was going to go. Which that probably makes no sense at all. Uh, but I did give this like a four out of five. Three and a half, four out of five. Um, it was enjoyable. I would definitely like to read more. It's Alex Michael D's, Michael Ides, Michael Ides. I always forget to look people's names up. Oh my gosh. Okay. But yeah, so enjoyable. Not one that I would revisit. A lot of mysteries and thrillers I don't revisit because you already know like the twist and everything. Um, the last book that I had to read was a book with, for the genre bending category. Back up, buddy. Um, and that was Faux by Ian Reid. So this one I assumed was going to be not just like a thriller but also horror because he wrote I'm thinking of ending things and that kind of counted as, as horror so I guess you could kind of categorize this under horror but you could also categorize it like under sci-fi also uh in this I don't want to tell you much and I don't even think the inside jacket flap says much either but basically this couple Junior and Henrietta they live kind of like out on a farm like in the middle of nowhere you don't really know like what time frame this is taking place in like what year it is um but they get this visit from a weird stranger and they're told some news that junior's going to have to 
leave the farm and like travel and then you start to find out like why and what the deal is and all this weird shit is going on and I really like his writing. I liked, I'm thinking of any things better, I gave that one like a four and a half or a five out of five stars and this one I would give a four. I think the other one was more, had more of a horror element to it and that's why I liked that one more but I would still really recommend this one. I'm definitely going to be um, picking up whatever else he ever puts out. Uh, I just, I really enjoy his books. They're all, they're so far the two that I've read. I don't know, I'm not 100% sure if he has anything else out. Um, they're fairly short. So, but they, they, they pack a punch for how short they are. This one is under, um, this, oh, I think it's, it's just over 250 pages. So, um, it, there's a lot in it and uh it's it was really enjoyable i really liked it and um so i i finished all the challenges um the group book that i mentioned an honest girl i've talked about it earlier in the vlog i'm pretty sure um i did enjoy it so if you want to talk about it down below just be wary of spoilers i tried reading the wife between us by them i dnf'd it this I hear is better than The Wife Between Us, not just like story wise, but the writing has gotten better. And um, I'm, I'm glad we picked this one. I'm glad we picked it up. It, it And I went into it with really low expectations. So maybe that's why I liked it so much or enough to give it a four. Uh, but yeah, so I have completed Who Done a Thon and I'm really glad I did because for a minute there I was worried I won it. I am going to link Crystal's vlog down below as well because she uh, was kind of talking about her feelings towards mystery thrillers and she kind of like talks about how she came to the conclusion like that this isn't her favorite genre it's not going to be like the genre that she is always reaching for uh, which totally like I totally understand that and I get that and I'm kind of in the same place right now I, mystery thrillers have always been like my go-to even since I was really young I read like Nancy Drew and like whatever else I would even consider like goosebumps mysteries too so I and I always like those type of shows and like those are just like my go-to so it's never it's not a genre that I'll like stop reading completely but it is one where if I feel like for me if I'm packing five of them into a week or two at a time I get burnt out from them and it was kind of difficult right now um, because I really want to read fantasy books so although I enjoyed the readathon and a few people like participated and we talked on Twitter a little bit or on in the comments or on Instagram or whatever I'm really glad that people joined in and maybe we will do this again at another time um, and I had fun hosting it. It's just weird like working a full-time job and doing something like this but it was fun to be able to talk with other people about like what we're reading or maybe like talk about the group book a little bit. So I did have fun and I enjoyed the readathon but I am looking forward to uh, getting back into the fantasy books that I want to read. I um, uh, like a year or two, I've always liked fantasy but for the longest time I was really focused on the mystery books or like literary fiction and things like that, classics. I used to read a ton of classics. Uh, but I just really am craving fantasy and it really like, my sister a few years ago got me into Brandon Sanderson which led me into Robin Hobb and like since then like I've just that's kind of just been my thing outside of like Stephen King so um, I'm looking forward to getting back into fantasy uh, to break up this readathon a little bit I did read a Robin Hobb book or finish a Robin Hobb book within the couple weeks of the readathon and I've also started Shadow and Bone so like this just you know booktube made me do it <laughs> um all the excitement around the netflix series really got me like like i wanted to read the grisha verse series or trilogy like i wanted to give it a try for a while now and then now they're coming out with that show and everyone's talking about it i was like 
what's it going to hurt I'll try it out so I want to say I'm like halfway done with that book and I am enjoying it it's definitely YA trope filled like yeah I, I like her writing style though uh, but it, yeah totally like this yeah if I was like 10 15 years younger this would totally be my jam but I am really I'm still enjoying it and I think it is because I'm so anxious to get back into fantasy so yeah I think the next video you'll see me in is my February TBR so you'll see a lot of fantasy for that uh, but it is also the uh, women and horror month so there's like a whole readathon going on like surrounding women authors of horror novels or short stories or whatever so I'm going to try to read some horror in February and yeah so I am really looking forward to getting back to mood reading I did enjoy all the books I read I mean the lowest rating I gave was three and a half that's still a good book to me and I still love mystery thrillers I just I'm such a mood reader and like this mood has been lasting me like two years now but yeah um I guess that's it this is kind of a long update even though I was like I'm gonna make sure this vlog isn't very long and it's not much of a vlog nothing really happened I put a few clips in we've got over a foot of snow and then the temperature went up to like 50 degrees and then it all started melting and then within like 12 hours the temperature dropped to like 20 something or even colder so it was just all ice and it has just been a bitch it's just a pain in the ass like trying to get to work go to the grocery store I haven't bought groceries in almost like two weeks because I don't like it just sucks outside I don't want to go I don't want to be there the dogs like the snow but they can only be out there so long and it's just like ugh. I'm counting down the days until daylight saving time and uh, spring. Yeah. And I'm actually, March will be one year on booktube for me. So that's really exciting. And yeah. So let me know if you participated in the Whodunit-a-thon. If you've read any really good mystery thrillers lately that you think I might like. Because I'll pick them up one day. Uh, if you've read any of these books, let me know. And thank you so much if you have been commenting on my videos or subscribed. I've hit over 500 subscribers a while ago and it's still really exciting. And I really appreciate it. So, um, yeah, just subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some comments, whatever. I'm trying to be more active on Twitter, but like... It's hard. I don't know. It's weird. Twitter's weird. I'm really active on Instagram, so you can find those links below and you can contact me there. We can chat books or whatever. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.